Welcome, welcome, welcome to our show. Welcome to our show, offered by the people. You are the guest. You are the host, and you are the sponsor. Don't go. It's gonna be a great show. Welcome. It's gonna be a great show. We're gonna be reading now. Uh, Taking more risks as we have been doing lately. And uh, do you want to think and grow risks? I want to think and grow risks. Don't go. We're going to think and grow risks. We're going to start reading right away. Do not go. Do you want to be educated? Do you want your mind? To be enlightened and feel your nerves to the point that you're thinking we're well, rich, rich with us. Let us continue reading where we left our last time right away. Let us jump into it. Here we go. Ready, set, and go. Thinking we're rich. Time and doors because they dreamed and translated their dreams into organized thought. Before passing to the next chapter, kindle a new. In your mind the fire of hope faith courage and tolerance if you have this taste of mind and the working knowledge of the principles described all else that you need will come to you if you have listen if you have hope faith courage and tolerance all you need will come to you when you are ready for it let Emerson stay the thought in these words every proverb every book every byword that belongs to thee belongs to thee for aid and comfort shall surely come home through open or winding passages every friend whom not thy fantastic will but the great and tender soul in thee cravet shall lack thee in his embrace this is poetry Big time push. There is a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. There is a difference between a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. Are you wishing or are you ready to receive? No one is ready for a thing until he believes he can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief, not mere hope or wish. Open-mindedness is essential for belief. Closed minds do not inspire faith, courage, and belief. Remember, no more effort is required to aim high in life, to demand abundance and prosperity, than is required to accept misery and poverty. Mm. So the same effort you make for misery and poverty to attract that is the same effort that you will make for riches, prosperity, abundance, and all the great things that we all want. A great poet has correctly stated this universal truth through these lines. I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged at evening when I counted my scanty store. Only to learn dismay that any wish I had asked for life, of life, life would have willingly paid. Life is willing to pay you any wish you ask. It's impressive the things you can get when you ask, they say. You might be able to get things that you didn't even know you would get by asking, meaning that in your mind you might be like, if I ask for that, there's no way I'm going to get it. But the book is telling us, and I agree with this. 100% agree with this. I agree with this 100%. It's saying that if you ask life, the universe, for a specific wage, whether it be high or low, whether it be what you always dreamed of, of what you always feared, you could get that. You could very well get that, which you're asking for. Mm. You could get that. 
What's your axe for? Mm. Let us continue reading. Desire outweighs Mother Nature. Desire goes beyond Mother Nature. As a fitting climax to this chapter, I wish to introduce one of the most unusual persons I have ever known. I first saw him 24 years ago. 24 years ago, a few minutes after he was born. He came into the world without any physical sign of ears and the doctor admitted when pressed for an opinion that the child might be deaf and mute. Deaf and mute for life. I challenged the doctor's opinion. I had the right to do so. I was the child's father. So his son was declared by the doctor to possibly be deaf and mute for life. Why? 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 I too reached the decision and rendered an opinion and rendered an opinion but I expressed the opinion silently in the secrecy of my own heart. I decided that my son would hear and he would speak. Nature could send me a child without ears but nature could not induce me to accept the reality of the affliction. In my own mind I knew that my son would hear and speak. How? I was sure there must be a way, and I knew I would find it. I thought of the words of the immortal Emerson. The whole course of things goes to teach us faith. We need only obey. There is guidance for each of us, and by lowly listening, we shall hear the right word. The right word? Desire. More than anything else. More than anything else, I desire that my son should not be a deaf mute. He desired that his son would not be a deaf mute, as the doctor said. More than anything he could ever desire. Imagine the doctor telling you your son might uh, come out a little, or not a little, like deaf and mute for the rest of his life. Imagine as a father how much you would desire for that to not be the case. That, that my friends, that example right there gives you an insight into the nature of desire. Your son is gonna be deaf or mute and mute for the rest of his life, the doctor tells you. And you are the father or the mother the desire you would have for your son to not be deaf and to not be mute that's desire mm. let that sink in deep very very deep mm. damn that's if you apply that desire to everything else you desire in that same intensity and fashion, boy, let's get reading. Let us keep reading. I decided my son should not be a deaf mute. From that desire, I never receded, not for a second. Many years previously, I had written. I have we and our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds. For the first time I wondered if the statement if that statement were true. Our only limitations are the ones we set up in our own minds. If you got any limitations according to this, and I agree and I'm pretty sure many of you would agree. Those limitations only exist in your mind. Limitations of the mind. Remember that. Remember when you thought that you could never achieve that thing which seemed almost impossible and then you did it and then you're like wow it was so possible the limitation that I saw 
was only in my mind. The limitation that I saw was only in my mind. Limitations exist in the mind. That's profound. Let us keep reading. Let us keep reading more. I never said enough for a second. Our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds. For the first time, I wonder if that statement was true. Lying on the bed in front of me, as soon as the child was old enough to cooperate, I would fill his mind so completely with a burning desire to hear that nature would, by methods of her own, translate it into physical reality. So, the father set out to do whatever it takes. Let me just go in and do whatever it takes to put in the mind of my child, of my kid, the desire to hear, an intense desire for him to hear my words and nature. Mm, look at this, look at this um, theory that nature, once she encounters this deep, profound desire within the kid, would find a way to allow the kid to achieve or attain that desire which he holds so dear, so deep, and so profound within himself. Mm, damn. Do you have any desires like that? Desires that are so strong, so profound, that, um, that, um, that you think nature will find a way for you to make them a reality? Mm. Let us keep reading. Let us keep reading. Bum. By methods of her own, nature translated into physical reality. All this thinking took place in my own mind, but I spoke of, of it to no one. Every day I renew the pledge I had made to myself not to accept the deaf mute for a son. As he grew older and began to take notice of things around him, we observed that he had a slight degree of hearing, so he could hear a little bit. When he reached when he reached the age when children usually begin talking, he made no attempt to speak, but we we could tell by his actions that he could hear certain sounds slightly. Mm. He was hearing uh, sounds, the boy was hearing sounds slightly, so they could tell. It's like, that was all I wanted to know, that was all I wanted to know. I was convinced that if he could hear even slightly, he might develop still greater hearing capacity. Then something happened which gave me hope. It came from an entirely unexpected source. We bought a Victrola when the child heard the music for the first time. He went into ecstasies and promptly appropriated the machine. He soon showed a preference for certain records. Among them is a long way to Tipperary. On one occasion, he played that piece over and over for almost two hours, standing in front of the Victrola. With his teeth clamped on the edge of the case. The significance of this self formed habit. Self formed habit. Of his. Did not become clear to us until years afterwards, for we had never heard of the principle of bone conduction. 
of sound, both production of sound at that time. Shortly after he appropriated the Vitrola, I discovered that he could hear me quite clearly when I spoke with my lips touching his master in point. Mm. Bone, or at the base of the brain. This discovery is placed in my possession the necessary media by which I began to translate into reality by burning desire to help my son develop hearing and speech. By that time he was making stabs at speaking certain words. The outlook was far from encouraging. But desire backed by faith. Desire backed by faith. Desire together with faith. Seems like a powerful combination. Desire and faith. Desire and faith. Where are we? We are. We are. Placed in my possession by the media by which I began to transition into reality, my burning desire to hurt my son, help my son develop hearing speech. Okay, the outlook. Here we go. Towards the bottom. The outlook was far from encouraging, but desired, backed by faith knows no such word as impossible desire backed by faith knows no such word as impossible <music> having determined that he could hear the sound of my voice plainly i began immediately to transfer to his mind the desire to hear and speak i soon discovered that the child enjoyed bedtime stories so i went to work creating stories designed to develop in him self-reliance, imagination, and they, and they, mm, we have a little cut, but I'm pretty sure it's a strong desire, burning desire for him to hear, for him to speak, for him to have a great, great life. Mm. Wow, that's crazy, man. So good. So good. Develop the desire in you, your children, your friends strong burning desire help them to grow the desire every adversity brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage that's the cut we had the other day every adversity brings the seed of an equivalent advantage so if you have an adversity oh you have a problem life why do I have this why is this happening to me? Why was I born like that? Why can I not be like everybody else? There we go. There goes the camera. Give me one second. Let us... Uh, a little bit of music for you. Give me one second. Let me try to fix this. Do not go.
you're back. Are you there? Thank you for staying. Yeah, I guess this is fun. We are back. This music is so good. Faith and desire. Why me? Why was I born like that? That adversity, that adversity brings with it an equivalent advantage, if you see it. So, don't say why it was mine, don't say like that, don't say that. Rather say, what is the advantage? the advantage that I get from this is the right that's the right term is the right term let us keep reading don't go don't go it's gonna be a great a great 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 reading okay what is the advantage I must confess that I had not the slightest idea how this affliction could ever become an asset so it's like how in the hell is this good where is the advantage of this however I continue my practice of wrapping that philosophy and in bedtime stories, hoping the time would come soon, would come when he would find some plan by which his handicap could be made to serve some useful purpose. Reason told me plainly that there was no adequate, no adequate, no, that there was, hold on. But there was no adequate, uh, where are we? No adequate compensation for the lack of ears and natural hearing equipment. Desire backed by faith pushed reason aside and inspired me to carry on as I analyze, as I analyze. As I analyze the experience. In retrospect, I can see now that my son's faith, my son's faith in me, had much to do with the astounding results. The kid had a lot of faith in his father. He did not question anything I told him. I sold him the idea that he had a distinct advantage over his older brother, and that this advantage would reflect itself in many ways. For example, the teachers in school would observe that he had no ears and because of this they would show him special attention and treat him with extraordinary kindness they always did his mother saw to that she saw to that by visiting the teachers and arranging with them to give the child the extra attention necessary I sold him the idea too that when he became old enough to sell newspapers his older brother had already become a newspaper merchant. He would have a big advantage over his brother for the reason that people would pay him extra money for his wares because they could see that he was a bright industrious boy despite the fact that he had no ears. We could notice that. We could notice that that gradually the child's hearing was improving. Moreover, he had not the slightest tendency to be self-conscious because of his affliction. When he was about seven, seven, when he was about seven, he showed the first evidence that our method of observing, of servicing his mind was very fruit. For several months, he begged for the privilege of selling newspapers. But his mother would not give her consent. She was afraid that his deafness made it unsafe for him to go on the street alone. Finally, he took matters in his own hand. One afternoon, when he was left at home with the servants, he climbed through the kitchen window, shined to the ground, and set out on his own. He set out on his own. He borrowed six cents. And uh, his mother 
His mother opened her hands, removed the coins, and cried. Of all things, crying over her son's first victory seemed so inappropriate. My reaction was the reverse. I laughed heartily, for I knew that my endeavor to plant in the child's mind an attitude of faith in himself had been successful. So, you have the power, your parents have the power, your friends have the power on you and vice versa to plant an idea, to plant a thought, a desire, to plant a way of thinking and uh, lead you to be like this kid who had no fear and in spite of his um, of his deaf mute situation he still went out and gave his all without any hesitation mm. he gave his all regardless of everything father planted in his mind that he was capable and not only capable, he had an advantage. Mm. So the kid was thinking all the time, I'm capable of doing this. I have no ears, I may be mute and deaf, but I have an advantage and thus I am capable. He believed that, faith and desire, so. He did it. Let's keep reading. Let us keep reading more. Reading more. Where are we? I saw a brave, ambitious, self-reliant little businessman. Little businessman whose stock in himself had been increased 100% because he had gone into business on his own initiative and had won. He went into business by himself and won. The transaction pleased me because I knew that he had given evidence of a trade of resourcefulness that would go with him all through life. Later events proved this to be true. When his older brother wanted something, he would lie down on the floor, kick his feet in the air, cry for it, and get it. When the little boy deaf, little deaf boy wanted something, he would plan a way to earn the money, then buy it for himself. He still follows that plan. Truly, my own son has taught me the handicaps can be converted into stepping stones on which one may climb to some worthy goal unless they are accepted as obstacles and used as alibi. The little deaf boy went through went through the uh, grace high school and college without being able to hear his teachers excepting when they shouted loudly and at close range Loudly in a close wrench, he did not go to a school for the deaf. He would not permit him, we would not permit him to learn the sign language. We were determined that he should live a life, a normal life, and associate with normal children. And we stood by that decision, although it cost us many heated debates with school officials. While he was, while he was in high school, he tried an electrical hearing aid. But it was of no value to him, due, we believe, to a condition that was disclosed when the child was six by Dr. J. Gordon Wilson of Chicago when he operated on one side of the boy's head. And discovered that there was no sign of natural hearing equipment. During his last week in college, 18 years after the operation, Something happened which marred the most important, the most important turning point of his life. Through what seemed to be mere chance, he came into possession of another electrical hearing device. 
practically as well as any person with normal hearing. He was listening just like anybody else. Mm. He was listening just like anyone else. Anyone else? Are you listening just like anyone else? Just like anybody else. God moves in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. Of joy because of the changed world which had been brought to him through his hearing device he rushed to the telephone called his mother and heard her voice perfectly the next day he plainly heard the voices of his professors in class for the first time in his life previously he could hear them only when they shouted a chore wrench only when they shouted previously A short wrench. He heard the radio. He heard uh, he heard the talking pictures video, I believe. For the first time in his life, he could converse freely with other people without the necessity of their having to speak loudly. Truly, he had come into possession of a changed world. We had refused to accept nature's error, and by persistent desire, we had induced nature to correct that error through the only practical means available available period desire had commenced to pay dividends but the victory was not yet complete the boy still had to find a definite and practical way to convert his handicap into an equivalent asset Hardly realizing the significance of what had already been accomplished, but intoxicated with the joy, the joy of his newly discovered world of sound, he wrote a letter to the manufacturer of the hearing aid, of the hearing aid, enthusiastically describing his experience. Something in his letter, something perhaps which was not written on the lines, but back of them, caused the company to invite him to New York. When he arrived, he was escorted through the factory and while talking with the chief engineer, telling him about his changed world, a hunch, an idea, or an inspiration, call it what you wish, flashed into his mind. It was this impulse of thought which converted his affliction into an asset. Destined to pay dividends in both money and happiness to thousands for all time to come. The sum and substance of that impulse of thought was this. It occurred to him that he might be of help to the millions of deaf and people who go through life without the benefit of hearing devices. Let us mm, leave it right there. Faith and desire. Make nature find a way. Find a way. Make nature find a way for you to achieve that which you want and desire. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. We appreciate uh, your presence. We appreciate the fact that you stayed and listened to the whole thing. I know. Reading boost might be uh, might take a little bit of work. I guess you're tired of oh, too much work, but the benefit of it is 10 times the price that you pay for it. So, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching through YouTube. Please help us. Like and subscribe. Uh, like and subscribe. If you're listening to Spotify, we have a YouTube channel. You can see us there. If you are seeing on YouTube, you can go to the podcast and listen to the podcast, which might be easier because of uh, the length, maybe, of the reading. Because we're reading, it takes a little bit of time. But thank you for being here. Please come back. 
so we can continue to read think and grow rich thank you we'll see you later take care good bye adios <laughs>